Good, is it all? Brit. You're good? Shit. All right. There we go. Season two of a Toast of Life podcast. We're back in downtown LA and we have a special guest that took just a little bit to come back. I'm gonna let her introduce herself for Hello, my name is Ariel and I'm a fitness influencer. Ooh, applause for Ariel. She made it, bro. You're a fitness influencer. How long have you been in in I, that just like platform? Yeah. Well, I've been on Instagram for a while, but okay. I think that I would consider myself an influencer probably like beginning of this year. I started seeing like my followers grow and everything, and I'm like, what the heck? I didn't know that so many people wanted advice. Yeah. With the whole fitness stuff, like. There's just so many resources online that you can find, but there's people that just want to go to you and just look up to you and want that advice from that person. You're saying just up to this year, why? Because, like, it grew from this year? Like, this year, like, your social media just blew up? I just started noticing what I really wanted, and I was like, wow, being a fitness influencer is pretty dope. How many uh, followers on your platforms do you got? Uh, So TikTok, probably 69K. And Instagram, almost at 10. Okay. Jesus Christ. Already monetized. Monetized already. Um, both or just one? Both. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. How, yeah. So you do that and you have another job. Yeah, my day job. Your day. Can we ask what you do for your day job? Or is it a secret? We can keep it a secret. Yeah, we're going to keep it a secret just because my work is very like, yeah, yeah, no, no, we can. definitely. Yeah, I know people do go into my work and they'll see me and be like, "Oh shoot, I didn't I know you worked you. there." Yeah. So did that like change your kind of like your lifestyle now that your platform is up there? People are watching you. Is that more 100%. of a hundred percent? Every time I'm going out, always someone. Oh, you're that girl from Instagram. So it's like it's a cool feeling, but also it's like wow. Now I know that there's so many people watching me. No way. Mm-hmm. Is it all um, so mostly? One of the reasons why I wanted to get on, get you on here is because I see you, first of all, from Instagram. Mm-hmm. I see all, like, your, your lifting, your affirmations, your check-ins with your audience. But then you also go on, like, a week or two weeks of shut off. I want to, why is that? Or Sometimes we- it's mentally exhausting. Sometimes you just have to take that break and know, like, when your body needs to rest or when your mind needs to rest. It's very important. And I always tell my followers, you know, take that time for yourself because you're all you got at the end of the day. And if you're not mentally there or physically there, you're not taking care of yourself first. So So do you believe in you got to take care of yourself in order to take care of others? 100%. Ooh. 100%. I, I tell that to, uh, to Brittany most of the time and anybody else because I think we worry so much about taking care of others, putting everybody else first. Mm-hmm. Yet we never put ourselves first and we put ourselves through through hell and sort of say mentally, emotionally, physically to the point like you're so drained. You're just like, I don't want to get up. Right. I want to shut off. Yeah. And that's what a little bit of like losing that passion. If you're at it all the time and you're overworking yourself, you're not going to find that passion anymore yeah. in that what you truly love to do. So you got to have to you know, re- refrain, kind of refresh and remember like why you're doing it and take that little break. So for not just for myself, but for your audience, what got you inside the gym? What made you like, this is it. This is what I want to do for two, three hours a day. Well, to begin with, it wasn't even like that. Mm. I took a kinesiology course and it was like a workout class in college. And I actually got a D in that class. Like I did not want to show up for myself. I was like, 
why am I going to, why am I going to be forced to go work out yeah. when I can just do it on my own time, you know? It, yeah, it, I, we've had, me and Cindy have always had a conversation and with our group of friends that you have to really be in the gym and you have to go through it. Like, really, really go through it. Like, you're tired, your body's beat up, mentally, physically exhausted, and yet you still make it in. Yeah, 100%. So then I started at, uh, first started at my first gym and I was like, okay. I mean, I just need a hobby at this point. I was just going to work, school. I was like, I need some stress relief. Yeah. Going to the gym, cardio all day. Cardio all day. I do a lot of cardio, too. It couldn't be me. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you can only tell by the 250 pounds that I am, huh? Hey, cardio ain't that bad, but it is pretty bad. <laughs> so did you beat that stigma of that you need to do cardio for the whole hour or how is that training that you do? I think once I started realizing what I needed to do to reach my goal, I realized that cardio wasn't what I needed to be doing. Yeah. I would be doing cardio, legs, what social media wanted you to look like. I was like, oh, I want to be like her. But now I have my own body goal in mind and just driving really hard to be that person. So, yeah. So what, uh, what inspires you or what motivates you to keep going? I think on your social media, you were at like, you did your weekly check-ins with your, with your audience, but has anybody ever checked in with you? How are you? Like, how really are you? That, that comment's going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think I seen it on TikTok when they said, uh, it was like a phrase like, oh, when they ask you, um, are you okay? And then they never ask you like, hey, are you really okay? Yeah. Um, I definitely have a hand group of people that do reach out to me and, you know, they know who they are. They are always checking in with me. So it's cool to have like those friends. But then there's also those friends that are kind of like just there to kind of see like, eh, how are you doing? You know, yeah, they, they just want to know what you're really doing. Yeah. So, so how how old are you? I'm 21. 21. There we go. <laughs> Don't worry. There's no alcohol in this one involved. We're out drinking energy drinks. You post a lot with your energy oh drinks. Oh, my gosh. I don't know what it is. Uh, when I started working at my job, I could only drink, like, probably 25% of it. And I was, like, off the walls. Like, I was running up and down doing my job. Damn. I forgot. We're, I told you we are going to shotgun a bang. <laughs> and we never did. I guess I'll take a second one later on. We'll have anyway. to do another podcast to follow up. Yes. Because this was, I think, the last, the first time I messaged you, we were out in Fontana. And it was... Man, like three months ago, at least. Yeah, it's but been it was, a while. Yeah, but it was just, like, I understood because you came all the way from the 805. You came from. Yeah, a long way. A long way to finally come back out here. But you train sometimes in zoo culture, don't you? Yeah, sometimes I'll go out there. Um, I haven't in a while. I like to go with, like, my influencer friends. So it's just a little, a little bit better of an experience with other people that you know so instead of just going and training alone. Influencer friends, how is that? Like, how is it being around with just people in your same, uh, fuck, same uh, industry, same platform? It's cool to see the different mindsets of different people in the industry, for sure. I've definitely met some really dope people and really cool just like connecting with people and i know they're human but you sometimes are starstruck you're like oh my god i've seen you on social media yeah i kind of want to be like you so, so i kind of just look at that i'm just like wow it's really cool to connect with people with the same mindset so going back to that same question what motivated you what motivates you what motivates me is seeing just like the progress i mean i'm not doing a competition or anything i just want to feel good i want to look good i want to inspire women yeah i want to change the body type that that people think that they should the like stigma. Yeah, for that sure. you have big to, stigma around. You have to look a certain way in order to be this or. One hundred percent. I don't think, and even on the podcast that we had Cindy on, we talked about it, and even um, actually, one of our I think mutual friends, Jalissa, which is Brittany's friend, and we got her on the podcast too. Mm -hmm. Told her about you. She's like, oh yeah, and I think that's how I found out about her, and how I found out about you because of that. Uh, intertwine which is Brittany she was like hey this is my friend and she body builds and stuff like that training out of Long Beach I was like damn like and how you said seeing the progress seeing your progress pictures and videos you started from the bottom that's crazy and it's funny because I feel like 
a lot of people are like transformation like you have to be fat or you have to be bigger to have a transformation it was like dude I started like 108 pounds like I was skinny I was skinny and I you know the hardest part was probably eating so mm. being able to obtain that structure now is like a lot easier I was a uh how was your up? Did you always live in the 805? Yeah, I did. How was it? How was your upbringing? How was your childhood? It was good. Um, there was not a lot of people around me who worked out, so it was kind of just like what was I that? brought that upon myself to do it. What was like a regular day, uh, like through high school to to now? Like, what's a major difference, or how did you start growing up? Certain events, sports that you did? Yeah, um, in high school I played softball, so I had I have a history of you know, sports. playing sports and being athletic. And, yeah. Um, so that was, that was always fun. But, and as soon as I got into college, I was like, okay, I need to step it up a notch. Ooh. Yeah. And found the gym. Found the gym. And I love it. No stopping. No. So what, do you have like a certain goal that you want to obtain with, with being in the gym? So you already have your platform, mm -hmm. but is there a certain um, business inquiry that you want to attain or want to pursue? Um, I definitely want to make my own brand. I don't think I want to put my name on anything. I want to, a word that like resonates with me. Yeah. That's definitely a goal. Um, as far as competing, I think I will compete within the next year. Um, whether that's bodybuilding or powerlifting, I'm kind of like iffy between the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, just be influential for sure. What's a, a phrase or a quote that you live by? All gas, no brakes. <laughs> All gas, no brakes. What? Why is that? Is that the just the way it's The grind don't stop. Song? Ooh. The grind don't stop. Uh, I I write. I like to keep in my mind that the marathon continues. Um, Nipsey. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> the late and great. Um, because it is a journey and it's hard, but the marathon is so fucking beautiful. Sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss. <laughs> We're not allowed to cuss. We're unsent. No, nah, I'm just kidding. Fuck yeah. <laughs> this is the, beauty, the, the beauty of like having the platform and creating the platform is you can do whatever you want, mm -hmm. right? Like obviously to certain guidelines depending on where you're at, mm -hmm. but this is literally your position. You can be you. You can be how you said earlier, un unapologetically, right? My stupid ass can't even talk. <laughs> but you're you. Like I, I always say there's no better version of you but you. And I think a lot of times we always try to fit a certain stigma of if you're an influencer or you're trying to be on social media in whatever sense, you have to be this way. Right. Same thing, like, briefly how we talked about, like, Cindy. Like, she has her own stuff, podcast. Shout out to Choke, what is it? Choke Me Daddy <laughs> podcast out there. If, you, if you're on Spotify, check it out. You know, you would not. You'd you not be disappointed. You'd <laughs> not be disappointed. Um, but it's just, we always try like the world just tries to regulate you mm -hmm. and you cannot do this. You cannot do that. You can definitely not be this, but you can be this. Like we come from a Hispanic background and like, I, I always say it's like, man, we weren't taught this. Mm -hmm. Like where we come from, we're one in one in a bunch, like a needle in a haystack. It's certain people that come out, but like we have to beat those odds. Mm -hmm. We always have odds. Like I didn't go to college. I went to uh, Juco, Maybe like two years, still didn't graduate. Mm -hmm. I was like, eh, it's all right. But I've never looked back. Right. Like even coaching high school sports, I same thing. It's like, I can't tell you what to do because I didn't do that, but I can tell you about the grind. Mm -hmm. The grind is different. It's definitely different. It's mental. A lot of mental. So what, what uh, advice would you give a younger you first? To not care about what others are doing. Did you care a lot before? I did. 100%. Yeah. How, how did that affect you? Obviously, every little move that I would do, I'm like, is someone watching me? Like, yes, like doing the whole influencer, everyone is watching you. Everything. Like, there's something in the background of my my selfie, and they see alcohol on the table, and they're like, oh, she's, she drinks? You know, it's like those little things you kind of have to watch out for. But I feel like just um, people – you have in the back of your mind that people are going to judge you. No matter what. And, you know, you kind of have to just, like, live your life. Like, dude, if you know that you're doing yeah. you at the end of the day, it shouldn't matter. And if it makes you happy, it shouldn't matter. Yeah, because, yeah. man, 
this world is just cruel, bro. Like, even us, like, we have eight, eight months going in this, and it's the same thing. Like, you have those people that support you mm-hmm. and really mess with you, and then you have those people that support you, but they just want to know what you're really doing. Yeah. They don't, it's not because they're not going to repost you and share it. They're just going to follow you, see what you're up to, make sure you're not doing more, and they want to keep you there. So that was, like, our main thing here, and I, was, I told her, I was like, for our first episode, let me shoot a shot. Let's see if we can get them here. Mm-hmm. And now you're here. Because it's like, we need to do something different. So it's not, it's not normal to go and spend money when you're still not making any money. Right. And I'm just, but I've heard it the last two, three weeks. You can never lose when you're investing in yourself. I'm like, ooh. That one hit. That hit. I'm like, you're right. I was like, because you are investing. And my biggest thing is we're sharing a message to people that need to hear this. There's a lot of people that are behind the curtains, scared, like waiting for that message to hit them so they can just be like, it's my time. I need to do this. It's me. So it's for the young, like your, what's like, have you seen like your demographic of what kind of, how old people are that, that watch you or is it a certain age group? Usually like 19 to 24. A lot of females. Mm. A lot of females. Empowerment. I love that. You're giving them empowerment. So what advice would you give them if there's, if right now, think about it, they are going to watch this, trying to hear what you go through, what you went through. What's one advice that you would give them? Do it for you. Do it for you. Because at the end of the day, you got you. Yeah. Invest in yourself. Like you said, it's like, once you start investing in yourself, literally like nothing matters. Nothing. Nothing matters. Nothing at all. Not even... Like I always say, you're probably going to get more negative comments than positive. Like, let's be quite honest. You might get more don't do it than do it. Mm-hmm. They'll give you 10 million reasons why not to do it, but never that one reason why to do it. Yeah. So I've, making this change for you, now that you have the platform, mm-hmm. what's, what had to get you out of that, out of that box? Experience, for sure. A lot. I wouldn't say a lot of people let me down because I probably let too much of myself in mm. to other people. Yeah, That's just yeah. who I am. I'm a very... You invest in people. Yeah. So once you start realizing that, like, it's you, like, you need to do less but do more for yourself. Mm. That's when you're just like, okay. So did you have to cut off a lot of people, change your circle? Yeah, definitely a smaller, smaller circle. But sometimes, like... You have to do that stuff. Were you a popular kid in high school? <laughs> uh, I had my two best friends. <laughs> that's Laura and Richard. <laughs> Shit, I think I think me and Dylan were like the same in high school. We knew everybody. Yeah. Everybody knew us. And even uh, to like today, we'll go eat somewhere in our city. And she's like, fuck, you talk to everybody. I'm like, yeah, but I don't know who they are no more. <laughs> like, it, it's just that. Like, you, everybody knows you in high school. And once you graduate, and I tell everybody, I'm like, dude, wait till you graduate. Give it six months. Everybody forgets you. They're always going to hit you with, let's hang out soon. And that soon never comes. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's fine with me. I'm, I'm very, I learned how to let go, how you said. Mm-hmm. I learned how to, if I'm investing in people. I know I'm investing in the right people. So I got to cut out the people that couldn't invest back in me. Right. I think what's really important to know is when you invest your time in yourself, you value how much time you're putting into other people. So I really look at my day and I'm like, okay, this is the person that is getting me in the right direction or is this person kind of just like there? Yeah. You know, why is this person in my life? Are they going to be in my future? If not, why am I still hanging on to what can be, you know? Yeah. Oh, don't break it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's true. Like we always got to look for the long run. Like, for those, those temporary fixes, the small times, like, yeah, you, you're always going to run into those people. But there's those relationships that go on beyond imagination. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, the people that are here, you know, shout out Brittany, Cindy, Dylan out here, that these are ones that have been there. And for me, it's like, I'll invest in you whatever you need. Right. I will, as much as you support me, like how they are now, same vice versa. Let's reciprocate that love. Is what what's your opinion on love? love. See, ooh, the questions come out just like that. 
My opinion on love is I believe it. Mm. I believe there's some someone out there for me. <laughs> You're not taken? I'm not taken. Not not uh, <laughs> dating or anything? Are you taking a... Uh, Just having a good time. Are we taking resumes? Are we taking... Yeah, yeah, hit me up on Instagram. <laughs> we'll see what happens. All right, what's the um, requirements? Ooh. This is getting hot in here. Yeah, it <laughs> is. Low key, turn on the AC more. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to start here. All of our hair is going to be like this. But. Seriously. Um, requirements? Yeah, what do, you look, what do you look for in a guy? Oh, man. I feel like I'm getting pickier and pickier by day. Six feet over or six feet under? At least taller than me. <laughs> at least taller than me. If you're at the same height, there's something wrong with the situation. Yeah. If I wear heels and I'm taller than you, that's still no, no. Maybe I got you. <laughs> I got us. <laughs> I got us. <laughs> Carrying us to the gym. <laughs> I think Cindy's, uh, Cindy's um, if I can lift more than you, we should not date. Oh, 100%. Huh, Cindy? Oh, we're looking at something. Crickets. Yeah, crickets, crickets. <laughs> huh, Cindy? If they can, if you can live more than a guy, we're not dating them. Out of there. How much can you deadlift? Uh, Holy crud! You're a beast. She it's, beast. She that's, that's awesome. she probably lives a lot more than a lot of the typical guys. No, one hundred percent. Oh right, and shout out Phil. She, my, our boy, one of our friends. She's always com- he's always competing with her. Oh really. <laughs> You guys like neck to neck or what? <laughs> With your weight, your um. She just reminds him, bro. I weigh less than you, and I'm still strong. <laughs> That's dope. That's kind of right. dope. So he has to be stronger. Has to be at least he taller than you. <laughs> at least taller than you. Um, ambitious. Ooh. Someone who's driven for sure. Someone who is not codependent on the other person. Like I hate clingy. I hate. Clingy. You don't want to talk twenty four seven. No, I don't want to even talk to you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll see you later, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you in like two weeks. <laughs> Are we searching in the 805 or we're done with the 805? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like the Lord will give me someone as soon as he's ready. Put the I'm, right person in front of you. Yeah. I'm not really. Did, did you have to deal with a, a certain. Have you dealt with heartbreak? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Trauma. <sighs> Lots. Lots of trauma. It's okay. You know, that's what shapes us, and mm. that's, like, something that you have to go through to, in order to learn, Yeah. like, what you want in a relationship. How did that change you? Oh, drastically. It drastically changed my lifts 100%. You know, you drive you drive that way, and you're like, Hell yeah. fuck this guy. No, I'm just Big kidding. gangster. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, be, I'm I be respect, quite honest. I, I respect my ex-boyfriends. Oh, okay. Sometimes I just said, like, we'll bring somebody up and be like, man, fuck them. <laughs> um, only because, like. Where is he at? Is he beyond the curtains? <laughs> shit. All right, bring him out. <laughs> <laughs> Say it to his face. <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do a reunion special <laughs> right now. No, and that's, like, sadly, I think it goes both hand in hand. Guy and girl always have, we have the same faults. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we like to shine the light on more on the girl, and the girl likes to shine more of the light on the guy. It's like, bro, like, what did you do? Yeah, what, there's what always two, two sides of the situation, yeah. and that's why I don't, I always respect, you know, you know, things end for a reason, and you just move on. Move you know? on. I, I seen, like, on TikTok, quote of the day, and said, thank you for letting me go, because I know I wouldn't let you go. Yeah, and I'm like, ooh. I was like, all right, like, I think right now our whole thing, our whole message is to get people to be uncomfortable in conversations. Like, yeah. really speak how you feel. Mm-hmm. Talk about how you feel. And that's how, you, like, when you did your weekly check-in, like, it's so crazy and so cool that people, like, really reach out. And I seen, was it this week, when you said you didn't, you weren't going to post to anybody just to keep it confidential. Yeah. But it's, like, people that you don't know come finding you. Like, it's they crazy. trust you. Yeah. How it's does, it's how, crazy. How does that make you feel? Like, It makes me feel... If, I don't know. It's just really heartwarming knowing that I don't even know who you are and you're telling me these things. And I think also people trust you a little bit more. Yeah. Because they don't actually know you. So what does that what does that do to you? Like, does that motivate you more? Does that light more of the fire in you? Like to keep going, to keep building your platform? Yeah, one hundred percent. Knowing that I can help at least one person 
whether that's like a workout, a motivational uh, quote of the day or a check-in, yeah. like that drives me. Like Damn. knowing, like going for my bench PR, like I was like, you know what? I'm doing this yes. shit what, for what them. Did we hit? What did we hit? 135 like? bench. Jesus. That's more than you, Dylan. <laughs> it's okay. We felt like we were hitting a plateau for a minute and then we did it. And it was like, all right, oh. we're back. I always make fun of my guy. But my guy is really cool. He talks a lot of shit too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, what it was, actually this week, and it's been more in-house conversations in the gym about like, my friends, they want to, like, ah, I'm so passionate about this. I want to start this, but I don't know how to do it. And one thing I keep remembering, like, bro, social media. 100%. People, people need to hear and see where you're at. We're at what? We're at 25 minutes? Yeah, we conversating, bro. We good. <laughs> um, I keep telling him, like, I gave one of the guys, like, he's very passionate about his, his lives, about the gym. And I see it in him, and I'm like, all right, bro, I'm about to do something that I wish somebody would have done with me when I was at your age and that passionate. I'm like, here's, here's a camera stand, bro. Yeah. He's like, I don't know. I, I can't record or this or that. I'm like, there's no more excuses. Here right. it is. I'm like, I don't need anything. It's just I want you to be that better you mm-hmm. because the way you're telling me about your motivation, your grind, it's motivating me. But hundreds of others need to hear this, too. Yeah. And there's that one person that will reach out to you, but a hundred other people that want to hear that or want to reach out to you. Yeah. So, so you know, how, answering those DMs are, like, crucial. You're very, like, interactive with yeah, your... Yeah, I try to. And I, I told my gym owner, I was like, I will never be that person that will ignore your DM. Like, I want to talk to my followers. I want to interact with them. I want them to know that there's someone that they are to talk to. That's dope. Yeah, because... Like I tell her, this, the whole social media game, is, it's tough when you, when you allow it to, get, to overtake you. I'm like, you get to the position where you create your following, you're doing this, that. When it, it becomes you, you start losing who you are. Mm-hmm. Like, I think don't ever let social media take over you. Just share what you need to share, but still stay true to who you may be, right. to who you are. You are the key holder to what you post. So I can share as much as my grandma passed away or I can post, oh, this is my outfit of the day, yeah. you know? A lot of people don't see the background of you, but you are the only person that can share that, Yeah. you know? So it's not like you have to post every single thing. I have seen people post every single thing. I'm just like... Fucking <laughs> 20 <laughs> times 20 million fuck, we're still there. Stories. We're still there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And they're, like, reiterating the, the same thing that they said in their first story. <laughs> yeah, and that's why, like, before I was like, all right, post 10 minutes of stories. I'm like, all right, that's too much, bro. All right, let's let's cut it down to... I feel to, annoying. Yeah. Like, even, like, a full day of me just, like, vlogging my day or whatever, I'm just like, are my followers annoyed with seeing the icon pop up again? Like, <laughs> they're like, damn, she just posted two seconds ago. Yeah, it's the whole two minutes already? All right, let's take that. That first, the first break, no? At least. Perfect. Damn. Uh, Salute. What'd you miss? Oh. A little toast to life real quick. We haven't even ended. Dylan, come here, bro. You're going to get on camera either way, but we're on. We're drinking special happy dads out here. What'd you have to do for this? Shake some ass or what? Ooh. <laughs> no. We're going to redo it? I could do it again. Good. All right, another toast, just so we can get on the second camera. Come on, Dylan. Come on, my boy. Come on. D- don't be shy, Bubba. Don't be shy. Um, so we're back, right? We're already we're spicing it up now because uh, the, the drinks came out. Um, no, we actually, in Fontana, where we reside, <laughs> there are certain stores, like, I kind of figured it out. Like, they get, they get them on Wednesdays. By Fridays, they're out. So I show up either on Wednesday or Thursday, and I clean it. You're three, there opening? Three, four, five cases, and I'm, I'm out. Oh yeah, because they're... Cases, but cases. that's 12. That's yeah. 12 packs. Three. Yeah. Well, I think... What's 12 times three? 25. Nah. <laughs> 21. <laughs> 21. Yeah, when... Because she got off, our kid, was in, our kid was in the truck, and she went, she's like, hey, I got one. It's like, how many is there? She's like, oh, there's like 10 more. I was like... Get four more. Oh, my 
my get God. four more. Yeah, at least you have them stocked at the house. Yeah, my guy over here, we're, we're stock, we stock them up because they're, everybody's like, dude, how'd you get them? I was like. You think it's like the hype? Just the hype right now? Uh, they're, they're YouTube gurus. Shout out the Nalk boys. They're YouTube gurus. I think they've been on there like 2015, 2016. This will help with the recovery. Electrolytes. It has electrolytes in it, too. Little beer, little beer can. <laughs> but, um, but that's, you know, kind of piggybacking off of that. Like, that's kind of a, a goal of mine, or, you know, maybe for you as well. Getting to a certain position and be able to give. Oh, yeah. 100%. Being able to give back. Yeah. So that's kind of like what we're trying to do is we're trying to get to that position where everybody needs some help in whatever way there is. Maybe it's to lend an ear to them, mm-hmm. talk to them, motivate them. And sometimes they just need a blessing. Like, if we got blessed enough, why can't we bless them? Yeah, 100%. So, I, I, ooh. I am definitely one that hates asking for help. I will be the first person to say it. And really? so, even, like, with the gym, like, I never asked anyone for help. And, like, that until I started asking and yeah. being more educated on what it was, like, I started growing, you know? How was that, getting out of that comfort zone? Nerve-wracking because mm. when I started the gym, I didn't talk to anyone. No? Until, I God, I can't even remember who came up to me. But I just remembered, oh, you know what? It was one chick. She came up to me. I had just gotten out of a relationship, and I was like, okay, I'm ready to make friends. And we hit it off, and we're still friends to this day. Shout out that person. Shout out. Dora was my very first friend at House of Games. Hell yeah. Shout out Dora for that. We all need that one person. Mm-hmm. As, as crazy as it sounds and people, nah, I don't need nobody. I don't need nobody. It's like, yeah, it's okay. I, I'm, I'm a firm believer of you have to be okay with the idea of being alone, but never really alone. Right. We always got to ask for help when we need help. And I had to learn that the hard way. Yeah. Ooh, big time. Mental health before this, didn't pay attention. I said, fuck it. I'll dig myself in the hole and I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out until one day I was drawing ruining the relationships i had more than me trying to save them Mm -hmm. i was like nah and it was like all right snap out of it now let us for help now cry now let it out go in the gym put the hoodie on put the music on put post malone to start crying what do you listen to when you go work out i'm what do you listen to i'm gonna let's start with you first first. well (laughs) i have spanish music I have Spanish music on How there. How do you get down with that? Ooh, groovy. I get groovy. You're Zap like and Roger. You're deadlifts, you're just doing the little toe taps and shit? Yeah, a little moving my legs, stinky leg out there. Uh, Zap and Roger. I, ooh, old school music. Mm-hmm. Uh, Post Malone. It's funny. I always say, if, put your saddest song on there. Get in that deep hole. Let's go. That's why I listen to The weekend. <sighs> I love The That's weekend. like a heartbreaking song. Well, you just feel it. <sighs> To the corazón. Yeah. You so what, it. what's uh, your playlist? What's a... Uh, I like a lot of today's rap. Um, a lot of the, the lyrics I resonate with. So I kind of just like find a couple songs here and there. I'll just replay those songs until I'm tired of them. Until a tear comes out. <laughs> until a tear comes out. Fuck, mind your business. You see me crying <laughs> in the corner. You see me crying. Don't don't worry about it. I'm all right. I'm all right. Actually, when it, that, the dude I was just mentioning from Orange County, Chris, he talks about it. One of the... Uh, one of their boys, Tua, they lift massive numbers. And one of them always cries before they lift. Mm. So they, they had like a little video session, podcast slash, and they realized, everybody asked, why do I cry? And I, from then on, I started getting into me. And I was like, I think about the worst moment of my life. I put myself in that place. Doing the lift is me getting out of that place. So now when I live, like those videos I sent you, I'm like, I got in that hole. Yeah. I, I got in that zone. I'm That's like, all right. Dope. This guy is dope. I saw your videos. I was like, sheesh. Yeah, I'm just, they're like, dude, audio. I'm like, I got no idea, bro. I was like, oh, I thought he just did podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I only live maybe once or twice a week. I'm just kidding. This guy doesn't even go to the gym. He just likes the aesthetic. No. Oh, <laughs> dude. The, what's what's a, a regular day for you? Like, your whole layout. So my regular day to day is depending on what time I work because I either work in the morning until evening. Yeah. And then I'll go to the gym or I'll wake up early, go to the gym, go back home, and then go to work. So it's not really a busy day, but yeah. I always prioritize my gym time. 
before I go and do anything. It's else, important. Like fun stuff. Yeah. Man, and you two, three hours. Yeah. So. And I don't even do a lot at the gym. I probably do like four exercises, but I really focus on what I'm doing. Yeah. And not like before I was just like in and out of there in 45 minutes. I look at some of my Snapchat memories. I'm just like, oh, my God, what were you doing? So can we get the insight of how you grew your TikTok? You just have to do the right sounds, the right hashtags. Mm. Show some ass, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at this point, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's hard to grow on Instagram, though. So once you build a good following and a rapport with your followers on TikTok, they will Transfer. want to, yeah, they will want to see more of what you're doing on a different social media platform. So doing doing that, how you said, like, shake, showing, like, your body and <laughs> stuff like that, does that, was it hard for you? Is just, like, you're just confident, bro. No, it was actually really hard because growing up, I never wanted to post anything that would make my parents sexualize and shit. Yeah. yeah. And like I grew up, you know, going to church and all of that. So it's kind of like you're a little bit more reserved yeah. in a sense. So good girls knowing, gone bad. <laughs> good girls gone <laughs> wild. <laughs> but I don't even look at it like that. I think now I embrace my body because I work hard for it. Why am I not going to show that off? Why am I not going to display that? Yeah. Like, this is the industry. Like, right. there's some people that will go out there and they just have genetics and they look great, you know? But, like, I built this shit, you know? You got to be confident. Yeah. You, yeah. So, even, like, now, like, I had posted a couple of days ago just a picture of my body and, like, obviously it was an ass pic. But that I was so scared to post because I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I know people from my work follow me and, like, how are they going to see me? Or, like... You know, I still think about, like, what people are thinking. Yeah. And, and I don't think that ever goes away, right? Like, even though we say, like, I don't care what anybody says. I, I'm me. It's like, oh, fuck, what are they going to say about when I post this? Yeah, 100%. So that's, even my mom, she's like, hey, don't you think with all the drinking you do, people don't see it? I'm like, yeah, they do. <laughs> I'm like, but I love it. <laughs> if it makes you happy, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think everything to a extent, right, that you don't let that take over what you're doing. Right. You don't let that take over your life. You don't stop working just to go party. You don't give up days just to go party. You don't give up the gym just to go party. I think that was just that it part when the gym turned. When the gym turned for me, that's when I was just like, all right, I got to give up days. Because we were drinking, man, 18, 19, we were drinking heavy. Mm-hmm. Until I made, like, I got to a certain position. I'm like, bro, I, I hate myself. Mm-hmm. I got no pictures of me during that time. I was like, all right, instead of saying yes to go drinking Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'm going to say yes to the gym. Ah, but you change. I'm like, nah, bro. You're growing. I'm growing. This is what I need to do. And that's like I told her from when we started and when I started, I'm like, bro, like this is five years in the making and we're barely making noise. Mm -hmm. So it's like, imagine we didn't do this. I didn't do that back then. All the amounts of conversations in the gym of, bro, I see you're grinding. You and your friends, you guys are grinding. That's what we're made for. Yeah. I think it takes a certain, it takes a certain, like, it part, the it factor mm-hmm. to really get out of that, that looping hole. Go to school, get a great job, get a family, get a house. It's like, nah, man, we're in the new age. You don't always got to do it that way. Mm-hmm. Like us, we got two kids. And I always say, like, why stop now? I'm going to be very hypocritical. You're going to have, like, ten kids or what? Nah, I cut it off there. Two kids. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Wrap Lying it up. And sealed. I already look. I already uh, set up the appointment. I'm done wrapping it up. I'm <laughs> out, bro. Our kid, man, he's year eight months, right? Gonna be a year eight months. Little Noah, shout out Noah. This is why we had to move it because he was a camera person. <laughs> oh man, no more naps, and he was just climbing on the table, ready to to just be on camera, drinking his little juice, taking a toast with us. I'm That's like, we got to move, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but I think for, and I always say it, kids just really change you. Mm-hmm. Sometimes for the good, sometimes for the bad. But like I tell her, if I don't do this now, which I know I have a purpose, I found my gift, I'm not going to do it 10 years from now and then tell him to go chase his dreams when I never right. did it. Mm-hmm. You, got, you definitely have to be influential to your kids and like set a good example. Yeah. Be that change for sure. You want to have kids in your life? I do. How many? Ten. Nah. Cheaper by the dozen. Oh, my God. 
I was even talking to my coworkers the other day. I was like, I couldn't even see myself pregnant, but I'm going to be definitely be pregnant and deadlifting for sure. <laughs> be benching, benching on my baby. <laughs> Help me down there. Help me press this. That's so foul. So what do you, man, with the kids factor, did you at one point in your life, like, sorry to get a little bit more emotional, but suffer like some trauma, like something that just changed your life from then on, you change who you are. Just being in a, a relationship mm. when I feel like you guys are not meant to be together. And you want and it to be, right? You low-key want it to be, but you know it's bad for you. So you kind of just like, you got to do your own thing. When yeah. And you need to start realizing your worth and stuff like that. So, yeah, I feel like that a lot of my trauma comes from my last relationship. How, how long was that, if you don't mind me asking? Not long. No? Not long. Damn. But we were with each other all the, da- all the time. So it's kind of like, you know, when you spend so much time with each other, it feels like longer. Yeah. But like, like I that. said, I'm not a clingy person at all, so I, I... Hit me back in two weeks. I'll see you then. Yeah, exactly. So what uh, the demographic of... What's the message you're trying to get to people? Like, I, it's kind of similar to what we already asked, but from what you're doing, your platform, and it's still growing in a, in a pace that I see it like, dude, this is, this is no joke. Like, two months ago, I was at 6,000 followers. Even a year ago, I was at 500 followers. So I just, it is crazy. It's crazy to see the growth. The life. I never thought that are, my are life moving, was right here. Are we moving to LA? Yeah. We, um, who, I think the phone's ringing. <laughs> it's LA. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fuck what phone? Turn it off. <laughs> we're going to be moving back. We're going to be moving the whole, the whole scene to LA now? We are. We are. Yeah. No, we'll see. Um, I still live with my parents, so, you know, we'll see where that goes. It, bro. Until I get married. Whoever wants to cuff me will we'll, we'll decide the living situation. We're going to put the email down there. You're going to send in your resume. You're going to put in your bench, your squat, your deadlift. How many, times is, how many times you go to the gym? What energy drinks you drink? What do you do for fun? Your yeah. job description? Yep. Dang. There it is. I'm going to put in my link tree on my Instagram. So follow me on Instagram at Gaines Bay Area. <laughs> Gaines. Keyword, Gaines, bro. Gaines. It's funny. Someone had commented on my TikTok saying, you really put the gains in Ariel, the gains by Ariel. I was like, I mean. And you're kind of, you're fitting your name, bro. Like, yeah. you're literally living to by begin, your name. To begin yeah. with, that, it probably didn't fit me. I remember I was fitness with Ariel mm. for, like, a month. I was like, yeah, let me ditch this. Yeah. Wow. It's a trial and tribulation. Yeah, I was like, okay, well, if I'm growing, I need to have, like, a catchier name. But then also, I'm, I look back and I'm like, maybe I should just put... Ariel Hernandez. Yeah. Like, I'm my own person. But you know how many Ariel Hernandez there are? Like, my name originates from, like, Mexico, and it's a male's name. So I'm just like, maybe we'll Ari- just stick to games by it? Ariel. What is it? Ariel? Yeah. Right? Ariel Camacho. Oh. Yeah. Rest in peace, my girl. <laughs> I'm alive. So you're, <laughs> you're coming from a Hispanic background? I do. You speak yeah. Spanish? I don't. No. In the 805, you don't? <laughs> People give me so much crap for that. <sighs> All the time. We're going to end this now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I said salud. Oh, you did. Never mind. We're I back. I know a little bit. I'm a li- <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're back. <laughs> we're good. I know a little bit. Um, I did take courses in high school and a little bit in college, but I just never picked it up. Like, it's just so hard to conjugate. Yeah. I, I mean. I mean, you, I think this has to be originated from, like, young, young. Yeah. As, uh, 100%. My parents never spoke to us in Spanish. So, like, I would pick up things here and there when I would yeah. talk to my grandparents. But, I mean, it wasn't a regular thing that we yeah. would talk, you know. I would just tell my grandma, I'm like, yo no sé. <laughs> yo no sabo, bro. <laughs> See, I know the how he said earlier, like, Cindy at her home gym, her mom, <laughs> every time we went, que onda, how's it going? <laughs> no, esta hecha mucho party. Like, we're just like, she's like, dude, are you fucking done talking to my mom? I'm like, no. <laughs> but it's like... But that's just how we grew up. That's how I grew up. My dad, my mom, my dad specifically, you're going to teach your kids how to speak Spanish because I'm not going to break my English just to talk to them. I'm like, you're right. And the way shit is, like, you got to have at least another language. Oh, 100%. Like, even at my job, people look at me, hey, you speak Spanish? I'm like, no. Si. I'm like, poquito. (laughs) Quieres un caja? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, no, I just, 
I, it, I never picked it up. I mean, I hear, I know little things here and there, but I cannot. What uh, a sentence. What are three key words you say describes you? Ooh. Um, driven. Driven. Love driven. Um, what other ones? Careless. Careless in a good way. Like, now I think I just don't care what others are doing. Like, I'm yeah. on my own path and all of that stuff. So I'm just kind of like, what happens, happens, and just go with the flow. Careless, driven. What else? Was that three? One more. One more. One more. Hmm. Don't neglect the last one. Oh, man. I don't know. Strong. Yeah, I would say strong. Strong in all areas. Not just, I think it's very important being well-rounded. Like, season one, we would always, I would always ask, like, all right, check-ins, right? <clears throat> Mental, emotional, uh, physical, uh, financial, because it's, I think it's very important to be well-rounded. Mm -hmm. If you're neglecting one, everybody else suffers. Right. All the other ones suffer. So it's just like, I, think, I don't think there could ever be a, a perfect number, right? We can never be perfect, but we can always be good. And we, because we always want more. I don't think you're, uh, I don't think you settle, right? Right. You settle for like what, hey, you. I think now, now that I, what I know now, I don't settle for less. I want, I'm always wanting more for myself. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Damn. Yeah. Jesus Christ, I don't even. Drink to that. I got to drink to that one. <laughs> Um, so what is, let's see, where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Oh, man. Doing the same damn thing. Now, um, I def like we were talking about earlier, definitely giving back. I want to give back to my parents because they've definitely done above and beyond for me. Yeah. And I value them so much. So I think that coming from my parents, I feel like they taught me so much. I would just want to give that all back to them. How did they re how have they reacted to like your social media platform? I think once they started realizing I'm getting sponsored and stuff like that, they're kind of like, "Okay, cool. Like she's actually going somewhere." Can we talk about those sponsorships? Yeah. Um currently your I'm Your newest one, bro. My, my newest one is TLF. Um, TLF. Nice. Super dope. Uh, one of my other homies from Washington is sponsored by M2. So that that's so cool that like I have like a little community with like that yeah. brand. Yeah. Yeah, so it's cool. Um TLF Ariel at checkout to save yourself. Oh, wins. We're going to put in the link. There you go. Yeah. Type that shit in. <laughs> to support your girl. But yeah, uh, TLF, I am currently with AMP Supplements. So nice. all their supplements. What's uh, your supplement? What do you take? I take their pre-workout. Mm -hmm. I used to take their protein, but I feel like now I have more of a solid like eating yeah. schedule that I'm okay without it, but I'll have it here and there. Used to be with the, uh, what's that brand? VT? VTFT. Right? What, what happened there? What, are um, you still there? No more? Yeah, no drama. I just think that, like, when you're expanding a brand, I feel like a lot of my time wasn't prioritized with them. Mm. So I just think that, like, you know, you part ways and stuff like Correct. that. But I still support them 100%. I'm still following them. We yeah. message each other. So it's cool. It's so cool to see, like, they're doing their thing and they have their goals and stuff like that. So you think the more you grow, is just, like, you, you need to find that those brands or that really just describe – Describe who you are, kind of, in a way? Yeah. Or represent who you are? Yeah, they help, for sure. You kind of, like, see the business side of everything. Kind of, yeah. like, what can you do for them? Are you reaching out to, like, brands? Or are they, like, no. just come re reach out to you, basically? Yeah, they reach out to you. Just a, a big, they're seeing the grind. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It, I mean, we know a lot of people in the industry. Like, a lot of people here in L.A., a lot of them are moving to Texas now. A lot of more opportunities, for sure. They want to see bigger influencers, yeah. So on the rise, you know, so we're getting there. Is that where you're trying to take uh, your platform? Like, are you trying to grow so you can, like, start expanding into different areas instead of just, like, uh, the I 8 to 5? I want to continue to do it so I don't have to be slaving myself away at my day job. I are, love my day job. I do. I are make we good money. Quit soon? <laughs> soon? I don't know. I just bought a new car, so I don't know. Maybe another seven years. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Unless the social media thing takes off, then we'll see. What? Yeah, you posted that, what is it, a month or two? That you had you had an accident, right? Yeah, in June, I came back from vacation. I was uh, rear-ended and total 
kind of totaled my car. They didn't total it, but it looked pretty totaled <laughs> to me. But yeah, Damn. it was a rough. That was a rough time for me because I didn't have a car to even go to the gym. I and I actually took a couple weeks off because I was like mentally just not there. Yeah, and I wasn't motivated to go. I felt like because I was going to the gym when I got hit, I was like, fuck. Like if I didn't make that decision to go to the gym, it, it wouldn't have happened. happened. Yeah. So. Ooh. Yeah, so I think I beat myself up about that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I knew it was because, you know, the other person was very careless and not really thinking. But you came out cool, no? Yeah, I was good. I'm healthy. I'm fine. Still a little a little bump on the head, but still we're good. We're at 20. We're at 20? Damn. We, just, we still talk, bro. We, we already announced that we're going to come back for a... Part three? Part three. Eh, like a part episode, a special episode, was it? Truth and Truth, truth, or, truth drink. or Drink. <laughs> so we're going to have to come all the way back. Um, yeah, so I seen that, and I seen that you had, you became vulnerable. I think that's one of the videos that I watched from you, that you were like, you opened up about how you were feeling throughout that moment. Like, you went MIA, how you said, and then when you came back, you were, you were vulnerable to the world, to the audience. Mm -hmm. Is that... Again, was, that's something that just... It's ha hard. It's hard to go out in, of your way because you, I did what I didn't want is for people to feel sympathy, but I wanted them to connect. Yeah. I wanted them to feel like if you're going through a hard time, like we all go through it. We're all human. We all, you know, sometimes we're not all mentally there. Or sometimes we're not physically there. We're yeah. not going to, you know, we just got to take care of ourselves. And I definitely didn't want the sympathy, but I just wanted to let them know that, you know, we're in this together and like, yeah. And you're really for the audience, for the yeah. people. Okay. I think that's just huge. How you said being in the social media, like you don't want to neglect what you're doing. You don't want to neglect your platform. Like just because you grew to 10,000, 20,000 doesn't mean you forget where you came from right. or where you started because that's kind of how I think about it. Like those people that support you that don't even know you, are uplifting you even more than people that actually know you. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, that's one of my things, getting away from the normal, Wait, getting away from our circle, from our town, and expanding to people that don't even know us, mm -hmm. that need to listen to us, that need just to need to hear the message. I think when you go into a certain industry, you go into a certain topic or platform, being you is the best you you can be, right? Like how I said, so your opportunities are endless. Your message is endless. I think we have better conversations off the camera, mm -hmm. depending on even on the camera. That's what a lot of people don't get. I'm like, yeah, we have a good conversation for an hour, but sometimes you always have another 30 minutes outside the camera, and it's just like, bro, like, this should have been on there too. Right. So do you have your group of friends that you can have these type of conversations with? Yeah. You can really open up to? Mm -hmm. I do. I have a lot of, like, high school friends that I can go and talk to. I have obviously newer friends and yeah. it's just cool to see like the different like type of responses that you'll get from different people, like how they view that situation and stuff like yeah. that. Um, but yeah, definitely like having those conversations are important. Yeah, like definitely. You probably don't get that at home with your parents or you don't get that with a mentor or whatever. Like you feel more comfortable towards other people too. So yeah, it's, it's tough, especially when you come from, Whatever background you have, like, sometimes reaching out to your parents is harder than anything because they grew up a different way than us. Yeah. You know, I heard it the other day where we're born into broken parents. Yeah. They're a certain way, so we're that, those ones that need to break that, that barrier, that bridge, and we need to expand. So I'm like, yeah, that's true. My parents are not this way. My dad's very motivated. My mom's very loving, very open arms. But still, like, we're... It, it's a lot tougher talking to someone who's not... Like, you can't really relate to. Big time. Big time. So, last question. What's your your plan or your message for the women empowerment? I know that's, like, your whole movement that you're trying to build. Like, what's a, a message that you would give to them when they're watching this? I think that I would tell myself to record and film everything. Who gives a shit? If your tripod's in the way of their fucking lips, I don't care. <laughs> Film your set. Like, because, you know what? Like, I look back at those videos, and I'm like, wow. Yeah. I grew. And even if it's, like, 
not physically, but you're transforming yourself in a way where you're like, um, you're seeing like more mental. Big time. Yeah, I mean, it's, I would definitely just tell females like, keep at it, do your thing, be happy with what you're doing. Because at the end of the day, you can only make yourself happy. And fuck the norms. Fuck the norms. Go out of your way and be your own body goals. Jesus Christ. Work fucking hard. Jesus. Nothing comes handed to you, so you got to work hard for it. Work your ass off for it. Yeah. And don't be fucking, disciplined. Don't fucking complain when it doesn't happen, when you never work for it. Right? Oh, that's, that's another conversation. Oh, you want to keep going? <laughs> we <you> keep going. <laughs> Um, I think I, I think LA's calling me again. I think LA's calling. <laughs> well, shit, we're going to save that for that truth or drink that you guys got to stay tuned for. I appreciate you coming all this way, finally making this happen. Oh, my gosh. It's been a while. I'm, I'm so glad finally meeting you and, and fuck, another toast. Cheers. Episode one. <laughs>